Okay guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do a video on atmospheric dispersion correctors. What are they and who needs them? The actual astronomy podcast has been talking about them a bit later. So I'll talk about how I use one and why I use one. And then we might go on to the aspects of visual use, which they have been touching on and why or why not you may not be able to use one. So don't just run out and buy one. But for me, an atmospheric dispersion corrector is an essential part of the, um, uh, the image train that I use to do planetary. Why does it help me do planetary? Well, the planets go from low to high in the sky, and the light coming from the planets is interrupted by the atmosphere. Each different wavelength of light, red, green, and blue, interacts with the atmosphere a lot differently. So red is least affected, followed by green, and then followed by blue. And they are dispersed at different rates. So the majority of the time when you see a picture of a planet and it's got red fringing on the top and blue fringing on the bottom, that's because whoever is looking at it, taking the photo of it, or what have you, the planet was usually low down in the sky and it was going, being shot through the atmosphere and the light was broken up and separated. So the blue on the bottom, red on the top, green in the middle. There is two prisms inside this and those levers move those prisms. So the light enters here Sorry, the light enters this side, goes through here, and then we move the levers to the prisms, although that is the wrong way, goes this way. And it, the separated light comes back together and comes out aligned on your chip, phone, eyepiece, what have you. There are a lot of different people that make them. This is a ZWA one and it's quite cheap. Um, there are ones right up to like three or four thousand pounds um, in British pounds. This over there would probably be 120 pounds. I'll list them up here on the page from uh, Pierre Astro. Um, APM make a really good one for 1600 pounds but again what are they how much do you need them how much quality you need will it change your imaging to that extent probably not a mate of mine who uses was using one of these now and was using the Omic Omegon one before and uh, does an exceptional job with that one On my telescopes, you'll see the location of the, um, the focuser on the 24 here. How we orientate the ADC is on an alt as scope, there's only one position. If you lower it down to face a horizon or a roof on the horizon and you look into the focuser, you can see the orientation of the horizon on your focuser. If the horizon runs that way, the levers are to be on the right hand side of the horizon. Now for example, on my 24 and the position of the focuser here, the levers are actually facing vertically down. I'll put a picture up of my 16, which is at my feet down here. But the focuser on my 16 is around here, offset a little bit, better for visual. When I first put it together, I was doing a lot more visual. Actually, I didn't have the plans or intentions to do um, planetary imaging with it. It was just only going to be visual. But the scope being around here, the orientation 
going from that orientation on the 24, the horizon's actually at that orientation. So it's slightly offset with this being up here. Now at Alt has scope, this never changes. You could swing it around west, east, whatever. The horizon never changes. So the position of your ADC is the same always. But for an equatorial mount, as it rotates through the night sky, the positioning of the horizon is always changing. So if you look at the bubble level on this, that's how you're going to put it in. So originally you'll find the horizon on your scope, or you can look it up on things like Wind Dupos that will show you the angle of Saturn, for example, in relation to the horizon and you can align it that way and throughout the night you can pick that if you want but once you find the horizon on your German equatorial mount you set your bubble level and then you will just constantly be changing it throughout the night just moving it around keep the bubble level uh, level common sense for me on the equatorial platform when I'm using my 16 inch dob because it only goes from a about seven degrees to seven degrees, 15 degrees, an hour's worth of use, doesn't really show up too bad. And I'll always have it set. So around the middle of it, it will be fine. So you'll notice that most of my images aren't too bad. I do have a couple of pictures which I'll put up which will explain the dispersion that you will see now, the vast majority of people who look at Saturn or Jupiter, whoever, they're looking at less than a thousand millimetres. They're not really going to see the dispersion because the light only shifts a little bit. So they might just see a slight fringing of red on one side and blue on the other side, a very slight one. If they're down nice and low, Northern Hemisphere friends are going to be down nice and low, although the planets are coming up nice and high this year for them. Jupiter and Mars are getting higher. They're going to have to wait a few months, uh, a few years for Saturn to be higher though. So when you're down around a thousand millimetres, you're not going to see it really that bad unless you're down maybe at 20 degrees. When we're doing planetary imaging, the focal lengths are very long. So... If I was shooting at 20 degrees with this and you're at eight and a half, well, this is nine and a half thousand millimeters of focal length, the dispersion could be as much as 50 pixels either way. So it's really pronounced. Use this at 20 degrees. I would probably have the separation of nearly all the way. How you can get around that, sometimes depending on where in the image train it is, you might not even be able to correct for it. A lot of people go with shooting with a mono camera and an R, a G and a B filter. On a UVIR cut filter, there's from about 400 nanometers to about 700 nanometers of wavelengths. So we'll call it 300 nanometers that you are trying to correct to get to the other on the, on the chip. If you're shooting mono with your red, it's a lot smaller. So the correction is possible even at 20 degrees or 15 degrees because you're only trying to put back together 120 nanometers of, of light separation because there is even separation through each color channel. Do you need an ADC to shoot DSO images? No, and yeah, it's complicated. Most people are shooting less than 2000 millimeters of focal length. The targets aren't as bright, so the dispersion isn't as clearly shown. And also, most people will try and shoot a target nice and high in the sky. Less shit in the air, less light pollution, 
so on and so on. So DSO imaging, not really a thing with an 8AC. Now visual use. Why can or can't we use one for visual use? Again, most people, if they bought a visual scope, they won't have enough inward travel to use one. If you imagine now, we've just added 55 to 60 millimeters of back focus. So the focuser has to rack in this much further before the focal point will get to the eyepiece rather than you just putting in the eyepiece here, now you've got to put it in at the end here. It's a non-magnifying space. So this is the big problem. If you have an astrophotography telescope, you may be able to get the back focus, but there's no guarantee. So you've got to have at least an extra 50 millimeters of back focus to use one of these over and above what your focus normally is. Now, the way you can get around it, if you look at this, and I might show a picture of me putting it into my 10 inch dob, but if you're using a one and a quarter inch bit, there's probably a 10 mil spacer going from your two inch focus to draw tube to the one and a quarter. You can unscrew this. This is an M48 thread. You can get a two inch M48 thread, excuse me, and then you can put that into the focuser. This will save you an extra 10 millimeters. And that might be all the difference between you being able to find focus and not find focus with this in your image train. So if you want to have a look and you want to buy one of these, make sure you do your calculations. I'll put it on the screen how far this is. Um, the Piero Astro one is shorter and you can get a corrected lock at the other end. But most of the time, this glass in here needs to be a desired size. You're not going to get away with 20 millimeters of, of extra inward travel. It needs to be a fair bit. And also, you won't be able to use two inch eyepieces with this one. And probably cost a fucking bomb to get a one, a two inch ADC. Probably not even possible. I haven't seen one. Hope you've learned something. And if you want to know some other stuff, ask the question. I'll try and do a video. All right, bye for now.